In the video today, I'm going to show you how to create a custom calculator on your website with different types of form fields that users can change and see a live calculation on the website to get a quote or to calculate some sophisticated data. Without no more further ado, let's jump in and get started. To get started with your calculators, the first thing you're going to want to do is jump into Unlimited Elements widget library and under the forms category, install all the different type of form fields that we have to display inside of your calculator. So there's all sorts of fields over here, number field, drop down field, slider field, radio button field, and a message field. So what I suggest so that you can get the most out of this is just install all of these and then when you're inside of the builder itself you can decide what to use or not let's jump in and get started so today in the use case we're going to create a website cost calculator which i know a lot of you guys need inside of your website but i want you guys to take in mind that you can create any type of calculator a loan calculator car payment calculator mortgage calculator all sorts of BMI calculators and uh, stuff that's related to health and fitness and anything you can think of because this is a really flexible solution. So we're just going to show one use case today, but take in mind that you can create any type that you want. To get started, I'm going to search for the slider field. So I'm going to type in over here in the widgets pane slider field, drag and drop that inside. And as I go along, you're going to get um, how this works. So first of all, we have a field name over here. And this field, I'm going to use it for the users on the website to decide how many pages they want in their website uh, that they're going to ask a quote for. So over here, I'm going to write pages. And the default value, you can set that to whatever you want. For example, I'm going to set it to five because I think most simple websites have five uh, pages and minimum value i'm going to put that to one and in maximum value let's say the maximum number of pages will be 100 pages and so you can see that over here it says one and over here 100 and this is the current value over here in step that means that when a user slides this how many steps it's going to jump so i'm going to change that to one so this is where the user is going to decide how many pages. If I go down over here to options, I can change the label. So I can write over here, how many pages will your website have? Awesome. And you can play around with this. You can turn on or off different parts if you don't want to show the minimum and maximum values and stuff like that. And of course you can design whatever you want. You can add a description to any type of field, not just to this field. Let's jump in to the section over here and I'm just gonna make that less wide so we can look at that better. And I'm going to add some padding top and padding bottom. So we can see it nicely over here. So this is for the number of pages. And as I said earlier, the field name is pages. Let's add a different type of field. And the new field is going to be a radio field, a radio button field. So let's drag and drop that inside. And over here, I want to ask the users, what type of website are they going to ask a quote for? So we're gonna have two types. So over here in the field name, I'm gonna write type. In the label, I'm going to write website type. And over here inside of layout, you can play around with the different types of display format. So over here, right now, it's simple. And there's an option to make it as buttons. Those are like kind of like tabs. And you also have an option to add images or icons or stuff like that if you want the user to select it that way. I'm going to leave it into simple, which is the most simple solution. 
And also over here, you have all sorts of layout options. Really, the design possibilities are endless. So let's jump into items. And I'm going to leave only two of these. This is a simple repeater field. And the first option is going to be a regular website. And the cost per page for a regular website is going to be $100. But if they decide to have a WooCommerce or an e-commerce website, I'm going to charge them $150 per page. So that's the first simple calculation that we're going to make. We're going to mul multiply the number of pages by the cost it costs for each page. And now we want to present the result down here. To present the result, we're going to use the number field. So I'm going to search for number field, drag and drop that underneath over here. In field name, we can call that total. And we can take off the default value over here. Now, since this is going to be a calculation field, I'm going to make it a read only field. I don't want users to be able to input whatever they want inside of here. And I'm going to enable calculation mode. Once I enabled calculation mode, I have a new section over here that's called calculator. Let's jump into layout before we go into calculator. And over here, we have an option to show some data before or after the field. You can see before and after. And over here, it says unit. So our units is going to be dollars. So let's put over here a dollar sign and jump into the calculator part. Inside of the calculator part, we're going to make a formula. And for that formula, we're going to use the two fields that we've added. So the first field is pages. The second field is type. So we're going to multiply pages by type and get the total. So over here inside of calculator, I'm going to open square brackets, put inside the word pages and multiply that by type. And you can see that already this is working in live. So right now we have five pages set times 100 is 500 because a regular website costs 100. So let's improve this a little bit over here inside of layout. I'm going to write total, which is going to be the total. And over here, so it's easy for you guys to the understand the calculation. I'm just going to put inside the number over here. So it's going to be $100 and let's say 150. So this is not a necessary part. This is just because I want you guys to see how this works. So you can see as I move the number of pages, this is changing live. And if I change it to an e-commerce website, the calculation changes accordingly. Now, to finish this up, I'm just going to show how I take this one step further with a drop down field. So let's add a drop down field and drag and drop that inside of here. And this also, why I did it at the end? Because I wanted to show you how easy it is at any point to add more fields to your calculator and how to use the formula in different types of ways. Because right now we did a multiply action inside of the formula. And now we're going to add a addition type, like a, a, a addition and subtraction. So we can uh, do an addition. So over here, we're going to give that a name. It's going to be the domain. And in the, in the label, we're going to say domain type. And it, this works like the radio button. So over here, we can have a .com domain that's going to cost the user an addition of $100. We can have a .net domain that's going to cost $75. Or we can have a .org domain, and that's going to cost $50. So we have everything set up. We have our field name over here, which is called domain. And now we just need to add that to the calculator. So plus open square brackets, 
close square brackets, go inside of the square brackets, and over here I'm going to say domain. And now you can see that depending on whatever I choose over here, it's going to change the calculation over here. So that's a lot of awesome stuff going on, and this is really, really flexible also design-wise. I'm just going to show you one example over here, but uh, this is really endless. If I'll go into style, we have the slider track, so I can make that thicker or thinner. Let's make it thinner, for example. If I go to slider thumb, we can change this to, like, depending on our website color design. You can see everything is changing live and looking awesome over here. So that was just an example of how you can start playing around with all these settings over here and customize it depending to your website needs.